Good morning. Welcome. Thank you again for following. So this morning, uh, me and my friend Tammy hey, is doing a day trip. We're going to drive up the 395. I absolutely love this route. I fell in love with the 395 and Owens about 30 years ago. I've been back several times. It's fairly close to my house. And since we can't travel internationally, we're going to do some little day sites around. So stay tuned while we drive up the 395. And for your information, I'm going to be putting all the links to the different places that we're stopping off at down below. The route we're going to take up to 395 is we're going to start in Victorville and work our way up that way. Our first stop is at the Thai Vine Chan Nguyen Buddhist Meditation Center. For years, I've been traveling up to 395, and I remember years and years ago, uh, this temple, they started constructing it. Uh, it's just a few statues at the time, and now just it's amazing what they've accomplished it's absolutely beautiful i really enjoyed all of the statues that they had the temple is still used today so remember to be respectful next stop is ransburg ransburg is just north of kramer junction and about 20 miles south of ridgecrest there's plenty of signs you won't miss it we got to Ransburg before 10 o'clock. All of the stores and shops were closed. So we did just go around and get some pictures. We were the only ones around. I don't know if they were closed due to COVID or if they were just closed because of the time. This town was an old mining town for gold and silver back in the 1800s. It has several little cool stops when you're driving through. There's a jailhouse uh, that you can walk into and it's got a bunch of information. There's antique stores. There's an old church there. There are residents that still live in that community, so be very respectful. One of the highlight buildings in Randsburg is the General Store. It's still an active store. You can go in and buy groceries. The soda fountain machine is over 100 years old, built in 1904. They still serve ice cream and malts. This is one of the stops I've done for years and years and years. We always stop there and sit at the counter and order a malt or a shake and visit the antique stores. Along the 395, there are several uh, little buildings that you'll see that are just abandoned. And this one was a little unexpected. I had no idea, I've driven by it a million times and didn't know that it was one of the cafes used in the old Twilight Zone movies. In the Twilight Zone's second season show, 100 Yards Over the Rim in 1961, it featured this cafe as an air flight cafe. Pretty cool to see that that's still standing. So it's kind of cool, these huge iron sculptors. I'm looking forward to walking around and checking it out. Okay, we're here now at the Give Take Sculpture. So let's see what's in here. So there's one for you give. So let's see what anybody, oh, they gave some change. That's awesome. We'll have to come back and throw something in there. And then here is the take. Oh, little um, paper art. That's kind of cool. Okay, it's kind of a neat little thing. And there's the Sierras up behind there. These metal sculptures just look absolutely beautiful with the Sierra as their backdrop. If you've never stopped here, it's definitely well worth the stop. The Olancha Sculpture Garden is located just south of Olancha. There's a dirt road on the west side of the highway just north of Walker Creek Road. Look for the Walker Creek Road sign. Once on the dirt road, make a quick right and you can't miss it. We are now here uh, right outside of Olancha off the 395 at the famous, is it a pineapple or is it a lemon? There are so many different things I've heard. I'm going to find out on this trip if it's a pineapple or if it's a lemon. So next to here is a motel, I think it is, or a yeah, little roadside motel, and it's for sale. So we got the official paperwork that says it's a lemon. It's not a pineapple. Yay, we got the answer. Next up on our trip up the 395, on the west side of the highway is Diaz Lake. Diaz Lake was formed after the 1872 Lone Pine earthquake. That year, 18 miles of the Owens Valley dropped approximately 20 feet and new springs opened up causing water to fill the lowland. The lake was named after the Diaz family that established a cattle ranch. 
It's a pretty cool lake to stop off at. It's got a recreational area. You can boat launch. You can take your boats out, fish. Uh, they got playgrounds. They got restrooms. There's a nice campground across the way. So this is a really cool weekend stop if ever you were in the area. Next, we stopped off at the Mount Whitney Visitor Center. Unfortunately, it was closed. It was gated off. Couldn't even get close enough to get some good pictures. Looking at the grounds, it's probably been closed since March, about five or six months. But uh, when it does open up, it is definitely a good stop. It's got amazing uh, lobby with a ton of information about everything along the 395. In Lone Pine, there is the Museum of Western Film History. It's a pretty cool little museum. Unfortunately, it was closed when we went. I went in it years ago. An amazing little stop has a lot of great history, has one of the largest, most extensive collection of old Western movie memorabilia. Behind the museum is the Alabama Hills. We'll be going there later on in the video. Next stop, Alabama Hills. The Alabama Hills is a range of hills and rock formations near the eastern slope of the Sierras, west of Lone Pine in Inyo County. As you're driving through Lone Pine, make a left on Whitney Portal Road, or west on Whitney Portal Road. You're gonna go down about a mile, and on the right, there's going to be a turnout for the Alabama Hills Informational. It's a self-guided station where you can grab a map or something, and it will tell you the sights and seas and what. So you wanna stop there first. We were greeted by this cute little California quail while checking out the informational booth. Then about two miles up the road from there, you're going to come to Nightmare Rock, otherwise known as Brenda. There's not a lot of information as to why this is painted there. Um, outside of, the story seems to go that it's a misshaped boulder and a local artist decided to paint face on it. You can drive through the hills. Uh, it, they have a self-guided tour. You can get a little map and it'll give you some areas to uh, interest to stop and pull over. Uh, it is a dirt road, um, but two-wheel drive had no problem getting through there. Over 400 movies and a thousand commercials have been filmed there, including Iron Man, Gladiator, G.I. Jane, 12 John Wayne movies, and much, much more. They have the, the, all of the memorabilia inside the museum. One of the most well-known arches is the Mobius Arch. Uh, there is signage for this arch. It's about, about a 30-minute hike from the trailhead. I did not go on this hike. I was not wearing the right shoes. I definitely want to come back and do that hike. It was a perfect time of day. It wasn't hot. I would love to have done it. I just didn't pack the right shoes. So word of advice, always bring tennis shoes on a road trip. So we saw this tree from the road. We were calling it the tree of life. So I had to do a little walk, come up and check this out. Just north of Lone Pine, off the 395, is the mass grave site for the victims of the March 26, 1872 earthquake that destroyed the town and many structures. Remember that earthquake that formed Diaz Lake? This was the same earthquake. The earthquake took 27 lives. 16 were buried here at this mass grave site. Some of those were prospectors or ranchers, or just single people they didn't know, so they were unmarked. Leaving Lone Pine, heading north up the 395, on the west side of the highway, you'll see this aqueduct building. I've driven by it for years, and I never really knew much about it. In the beginning of the 20th century, Los Angeles put in the aqueduct that shut off the water from the Owens Valley so it would feed into LA County. That was the beginning of the California Water Wars. It's a dispute between LA and the Owens Valley, which was a thriving farming community. The dispute continues today with the court battles over the environmental impact of the aqueduct on Mono Lake and other ecosystems. The interesting thing that I found about this building was 
Obviously, Lone Pine and Independence and the Owens Valley was not happy to have this building there, uh, cutting off the water for their farms and their ranches. So in 1976, a 17-year-old boy, Mr. Barry, and his friend stole two sticks of dynamite and blew up the L.A. aqueduct. A hundred million gallons of water meant for L.A. was flushed into the Owens Lake, which was dry since 1913 when the aqueduct was completed. What's interesting is Barry, years later, worked for Department of Water and Power in the Owens Valley and regrets bombing the aqueduct. Next stop is Manzanar, the Japanese relocation camp built in 1942 under Roosevelt. During this time, over 100,000 Japanese were relocated to this camp soon after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. There is a self-guided driving tour that you can take. Uh, the museum part was closed uh, due to COVID, but they had brochures and maps and stuff. And then you can drive through the camp and see some of the old structures. They have rebuilt some bunkers or uh, blockhouses just to kind of give you an idea of what it was like back in 1942. Each bunker would house about 120 people. If you really like history, I would highly recommend stopping and checking this out. Next stop is the town of Independence. The Independence Courthouse was built in 1921. Little interesting fact, this is where Charles Manson was held on charges of possessing stolen property and arson before being indicted for murders of Sharon Tate and several others. This is Mary Austin's house. She was born in Hawaii and later moved to California in 1888. She was well known as a novelist, a poet, a critic, and a playwright. She was also a feminist and a defender of the Native American and Spanish American rights. She's best known for her tribute to the deserts of California in her book, The Land of Little Rain. Her and her husband were also very much involved in the local California water wars. Just down the road from Mary Austin's house is the Eastern California Museum. I was really excited to visit this museum. I've heard it's got some really cool artifacts and in California history. One of the things I read was that they have dentures made of coyote teeth. I was really excited to be able to see that. But outside, they did have a lot of farm equipment and stuff that we were able to see. That was pretty cool. Just a few miles north of Independence is the famous Mount Whitney Fish Hatchery. As you're driving up the 395, make a left on Oak Creek Road. This beautiful building stands out amongst the landscape around it. The brick building, the peak of the brick building can be seen from miles away. It's absolutely beautiful. It's my favorite stop on the 395. It's one of my favorite stops. In front of the fish hatchery, there's a big pond filled with big, big rainbow trout. Bring some quarters. They have a little vending machine that you can buy fish food, and it's a must. The hatchery isn't used today, but it's a really good location to stop and learn about how they would raise the fish. Inside the brick building, they have a gift shop. They also have a little museum area you can walk through and learn a lot of history about the Owens Valley and just up the 395. So another great stop. Good place to have a picnic, really nice grounds. Hope you're able to stop and enjoy it. Okay, our last stop on this road trip up the 395. Uh, we stopped off at Eric Schatz Bakery and Bishop. It is an amazing bakery. They have so much bread to choose from. Uh, my favorite is the cinnamon, uh, the cinnamon raisin bread and the monkey pole bread. I just, it was fabulous. They also have fresh sandwiches that you can take to go, which is what we did. And of course we walked out with bags and bags of bread to take home to the family. It's great. Here's some pictures of some trips I took years and years ago. I'll be uploading a few more in every video. Okay, so that's the end of part one of our road trip up the 395. Also, if you haven't done it yet, please remember to subscribe, turn on those notifications, and follow me on Instagram. Thank you again.